Hey everyone, my name is Corel, and today we're going to be taking a look at a trap you have to actively touch in order to kill you, the Corrosive Cube. Now, like so many of the traps in Meet Your Maker, it seems actively underpowered at first glance. You have to convince the raider to actually touch it for a short time, about three quarters of a second, in order to get a kill. The raider cannot safely walk through one, but they can fall through a single cube with some speed or grapple through a single cube without dying. I want to test that out. We can go into build mode here. Uh, looks like it put me uh, a little bit of an awkward spot. So I can uh, actually fall safely through a single layer of corrosive cube if I fall from some height. So detaching from my grapple here, I can fall through that just fine. And I can grapple through a corrosive cube. So that spot between these two corrosive cubes, I can grapple through that. But if I just try and walk straight through one, I'll die about three quarters of the way through the block. Now it is worth noting here also that uh, being out of a corrosive cube for any length of time when you're trying to grapple through or falling through or anything else like that will reset the damage timer and you will not die if you enter another corrosive cube after a break. However, if the two corrosive cubes are adjacent and you try and grapple through, you will still die from that. So if I go over here and uh, you saw there's a gap between those two cubes and then there's a wall on the far side, I'm just going to grapple straight to that wall and you'll see I will survive that just fine. However, if I was to try and do the same thing with these two corrosive cubes over there from, let's go over here to this side. If I try and grapple straight through these two, I will still die trying to go through there. Now there's also a couple of other equipment interactions that can be very useful when dealing with corrosive cubes. The arc barrier shield that I've got on my right mouse button here is very, very powerful when dealing with corrosive cubes. I can pop that and I can walk through the corrosive cube and it would hang out in there for a while before I start needing to get through there. In total, I can walk through two to three corrosive cubes just fine with this. If I'm grappling through, I can get even further. So the arc barrier provides temporary immunity to the corrosion damage. It's worth noting, however, that the deployable shield does not. Uh, I don't know what I was expecting when I tried this really, but if you throw down a deployable shield, step into the corrosive cube, it still damages you, it still will kill you. So with all that in mind, corrosive cubes can be used to create interesting things like grappling courses, or rooms where the floor is lava except for a single pathway through, or just deny areas to raiders. Uh, in, an, in a large room where there's a specific area you don't want the raiders to go, or you want them to avoid somewhat, uh, a lot, having a lot of corrosive cubes over there can uh, encourage the raider to spend time elsewhere. Now even better here, any projectile-based weaponry, and that means traps, guards, raiders, uh, weapons and equipment, and the grappling hook and everything, can fire through the corrosive cube. Uh, most traps and guards will not target through the corrosive cube. Uh, there's actually a trap on the other side of that, and you can see that uh, fired right through, but I had to actually poke my nose out around that corner before it was able to target me through the corrosive cube. Despite being well within the range of the trap, it's not going to target me there because it doesn't have a clear line of sight. Now also, as you might have noticed there, the bolt shot trap uh, had Hunter on it as a mod, and those bolts tracked me through the solid corrosive cube even though they hadn't launched by the time I stepped back around the corner. So if I go out here and step around here, you can see this again, you can see those bolts coming very happily right through that solid opaque corrosive cube there. Uh, they will track definitely through the corrosive cube if the trap itself targets you uh, before you duck around that corner. Uh, iron claws will do much the same thing. The claw itself has some minimal amount of tracking and it will very happily fire straight through a corrosive cube to get to you. Now corrosive cube mods are some of the most varied and mechanically complex in the game. Uh, you can also see here that they change up the appearance of the corrosive cube quite significantly which is uh, an effect that's pretty nearly unique to corrosive cubes across the game, as I'm aware. So over here we've got an unmodded corrosive cube, and next up we've got a splatter corrosive cube. Now a splatter kind of adds this box effect on each face of the corrosive cube that kind of contracts towards the center, and it causes the corrosive cube to discharge a small glob of corrosive acid, with a little bit of velocity roughly towards uh, any incoming projectile that enters the cube or contacts the cube if you've got hardened skin. The acid can kill the raider by itself, but it takes about as much contact time to kill as the cube itself would, so about that three quarters of a second. It's also best used in conjunction with a lot of corrosive cubes 
and also kind of in areas where your traps will trigger splatter, or you can expect the Raider to fire through a corrosive cube at close range at something on the other side of it, uh, just because that acid also stacks the damage time with that of a corrosive cube. So if the acid hits the Raider in any way, shape, or form, and they move directly from there into a corrosive cube, like if they're panicking and running away from something else, and they run over some splattered corrosive acid and then touch a corrosive cube, that damage timer will not reset and it will count towards the three quarters of a second that you need to actually kill the raider. Next up here we have the Hardened Skin mod, and this makes the corrosive cube impenetrable to everything. Uh, basically, you, you can't get through this. Uh, it changes the appearance to this kind of hexagonal pattern, and basically it turns solid, projectiles won't get through it, raiders won't get through it, guards won't get through it, nothing gets through this. Now Hardened Skin does have some weird interactions with other mods for the Corrosive Cube. Uh, as you'd expect when dealing with Hardened Skin, if I jump on this, it's going to damage me and kill me. If I, uh, uh, from over here, grapple to the side of it, again, it's going to damage me and kill me. However, if I look over here at this corrosive cube that has both hardened skin and opaque on it, if I step onto that, it kills me. Exactly what I'd expect, right? But then if I go to grapple to the side of it, I, I'm fine. I'm not entirely sure if this is a bug or not, but it's definitely some weird behavior. Now, if I do get close enough to the top or bottom of it that I am contacting that top or bottom edge, it will still kill me. So that's good to know, but uh, if I manage to land the grappling hook square in the center of the cube, I'll take a little bit of damage and then I'll just be fine. Now speaking of the opaque mod, this makes a normally translucent corrosive cube that you can kind of see through, well, it turns it opaque. Uh, while not terribly useful in terms of the cube itself, this can be used to create blind but still passable corners and they won't go away like a hollow cube would if the raider gets too close to it. So uh, it's great for creating blind corners that the raider can't peek around easily, or at least not quite as easily as normal, and it's great for obscuring projectile-based traps that you want to kind of follow the raider or chase them back out of an area. Uh, so like uh, bolt traps, bolt shot traps with uh, hunter on them, uh, it's great for iron claws, it's great for bomb traps, really a whole lot of uses for this thing but don't expect the opaque mod to actually do anything in and of itself, of course. Basically, if the raider can be expected to try and back up around the nice solid-looking cube to get away from the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune that are trying to chase them all over the place, the projectiles will be more than happy to follow them right on through the cube. Now, the second wave mod makes the corrosive cube effectively into a bedrock cube until the gen mod is picked up, after which it'll turn back into a corrosive cube over the course of about four seconds. Now, however, the corrosive cube is completely impassable until that four second countdown is up. We'll get an animation to where it kind of turns from a bedrock cube into a corrosive cube, but until that four second countdown is over, even though it looks like it's turning into a corrosive cube, it's not actually passable like a corrosive cube is. Now, despite the Corrosive Cube with Second Wave mod acting basically like a uh, bedrock block for most intents and purposes, Harvey will not path over it in any circumstance except one. If another longer path to the gen mat still exists, and the gen mat hasn't been picked up yet, and Harvey can traverse the Second Wave cubes as if they were solid blocks to reach the gen mat, then Harvey will happily traverse those Corrosive Cubes right up until the raider picks up the gen mat, at which point the corrosive cubes will have turn, of course turn into, well, corrosive cubes, and uh, they'll turn deadly and, of course, impassable to Harvey, and at that point Harvey will realize that he can't traverse these anymore and will repath back around to the gen mat over the other safer route. So to demonstrate this, uh, we have Harvey walking back and forth across these second wave corrosive cubes here, and he's quite happily marching up and down this ramp all day long because it is the shortest route to the gen mat. Uh, however, if I grab the gen mat here, he's turned back into corrosive cubes, and Harvey will now start following this pathway up here because it is now the shortest safe route to the gen mat. Now, corrosive cubes are a great tool for making an area dangerous, and they're cheap enough that you can afford to use or overuse lots of them. You need to be careful you aren't overusing them too heavily. 
uh, it can destroy the aesthetics of your base because these things emit sort of an orange glow. Everything around them starts to take on kind of an orange glow, and that's not really what you want if you're trying to go for a nice artistic base, unless you're trying to recreate the fires of Mount Doom or something. Also, while raiders uh, are less likely to notice a trap that is hiding behind a solid opaque corrosive cube, if every time they see an opaque corrosive cube, there's a homing bolt trap or an iron claw behind it, it's very rapidly going to wear out its welcome. They'll start noticing those blocks and they'll start dealing with them as if there is always a bolt trap behind it or an iron claw trap behind it or a bomb trap or whatever you happen to put back there. So that's going to become ineffective against most raiders very, very quickly because they're just going to know it's there if you only ever use stuff like the opaque corrosive cube to hide a homing bolt shot trap. To counteract that, you need to have corrosive cubes in various different places where they also aren't hiding traps. You need to have them in areas where they are still a threat to the raider, but they're not going to always hide a homing bolt shot trap, which adds a little bit of cost to the corrosive cubes. So it's not something you necessarily want to spam, it's not something you necessarily always want to have, but you occasionally want one in order to do stuff like the hidden homing bolt shot trap. Because uh, that's a very effective combination, and it will kill raiders for sure, if they are not expecting it. So you need to be careful about how often you use these things and in what circumstances so that you don't overstay their welcome and so that raiders don't always treat them like there's some uh, hidden ulterior motive behind the corrosive cube being there. Now finally, because raiders can easily grapple through single layer corrosive cubes, you need solid walls, floors, ceilings, and general blockage around all of your corrosive cubes. Yep, stop that. Uh, we've got over here a nice little hallway, and this would be great. Uh, this is a nice little hall with a corrosive cube in the wall for whatever nefarious purpose we haven't determined yet. But if I'm out here looking at this from the outside, I can say, huh, maybe he's got that entryway trapped, and I really don't want to go through that. So I'm just gonna waltz into his base through that corrosive cube and avoid all of the nonsense that he probably has planned for me. And that's very effective from a raider's standpoint. Uh, you need to make sure that everything around a corrosive cube is solid in order to prevent that. Or use the hardened skin mod on every exterior cube, which starts getting expensive quickly. Even if you make the corrosive cubes on the exterior of a base multiple layers deep, raiders with the arc barrier will still be able to walk their way through. So don't ever use corrosive cubes on the far outside of the base, or at least not in locations you don't want to have a shortcut for a clever raider to get in. So that's all I've got for today. Next time we'll get into one of my personal favorite traps, the hollow cube. Hope you'll join me then, and thanks for watching.